how do I optimize campaigns within PPC Ninja? So as I explained earlier, PPC Ninja is great for bid optimizations and for the campaign level of optimizations, there's stuff that you need to do. It's not coming from our software. So this is something that you will need to take action on yourself. And I'm going to show you three levers that you can pull with your campaigns, right? So how do you optimize campaigns in general? There's three things you can change. One, you can adjust your budgets. Two, you can adjust your uh, bidding strategy. So your dynamic up and down, your fixed bids, et cetera. And three, you can adjust your placement modifiers. What are modifiers? These are uh, extra kind of uh, multipliers that you can put on certain placements so that you can, uh, you know, in dynamic uh, or in real time, Amazon will uh, potentially increase your bid or decrease your bid in real time uh, and get you, uh, you know, in front of the, uh, the line. So uh, campaign placements are basically a way to get to cut the line, right? If you have a very lo long line of bidders who want their ads to show up on top of search in that, you know, that top section above the fold, and you want to be in that spot because it's the place where you get the most sales, then using a placement modifier for top of search, what you can do is you can give Amazon permission to increase your bid in real time if there is an opportunity to cut the line and go to the top. Same thing for product pages placements. In product pages placements, the line looks a little different. It's a horizontal line. It's, there's a carousel there. You see lots and lots of uh, products that are showing up. And then if you click right, it goes pages and pages to the right. Now that line, you can skip and come to the front so that you're most visible. And for that reason, you can give Amazon a placement modifier percentage, which I believe most people either don't understand or don't use or are too afraid, too afraid to use, right? How many of you here are using placement modifiers, by the way? Any, anyone uh, wants to, not using, okay. Yeah, I know a lot of, yeah, Barb, you do, okay. Yeah. A lot of people are afraid of these because they don't know how it's gonna mess with the keywords because you know these are settings that you put at the campaign level, not at the keyword level. These are set at the campaign, which means every keyword inside that campaign gets that, uh, you know, that multiplier, right? So, uh, so anyway, so we're going to talk about how you can use PPCC Ninja to adjust these three uh, very important campaign level settings so that you can get the most out of your, uh, your, uh, your PPC. Okay, so let's go into the campaigns view. Here I have my campaigns view and I've already kind of set a filter for uh, ACoS less than 10%. Why am I doing this? Because I want to see, is there any campaign that I have capped on budget when the ACoS is so good? That would be stupid, right? Like if you have a campaign with an extremely high or extremely good ACoS, right? Less than 10%, why would you want to restrict the budget? It doesn't make sense. Your budget should just be as high as you, as you can get it to so that you can take advantage of the good performance because it's a pattern that you can count on and just increasing the, the budget can help you get a lot more visibility. So here um, I see campaigns with 1% ACoS, 5%, 0.48%, really good. But you might say, but that's just for these one-offs, right? One-off campaigns, you know, in this uh, one month period, these are just one sales. I can't base my decision on just one sale. Fair enough. What you want to do is you want to go into your orders and say greater than or equals two. So now you have significant data. You have at least two sales to prove that this was not a coincidence. This is legitimately a, a good campaign, which can be uh, you know, increased on the budget side. So I'm looking at all these budgets and I'm saying, okay, 50 yen, this is basically equal to $50, $30 and so on. So I might take a decision and say, you know, increase the budget here to um, increase the budget by a percent, I can increase it by 100%. Easy, right? I can just say double the budget. Uh, I don't want to restrict this campaign. I can do that, or I can say increase the budget by an amount. So I can actually put the amount in either instead of the percentage, or I could say, say set budget to some amount. So there's three ways you can increase your budget in this case. Now, if this was the opposite, which means you were trying to find 
campaigns that had a really poor ACoS, meaning extremely high, like above 100% or something like that. And you had the strategy of at least capping those campaigns that are bleeding and bleeding you money, then you can actually do the opposite of decreasing the budget by a percent or de de decreasing the budget by an amount or setting a budget to something really, really low, right? Uh, so these are some of the campaign level levers you can pull for budgets, both actions for budgets. Another use case for budgets is during Prime Day. You know, during Prime Day, if you have good uh, campaigns with extremely high conversion rate, here's another uh, unique feature of PPC Ninja that you won't find in Seller Central anywhere. I mean, you find it in hidden in parts, but conversion rate, we provide conversion rate at every stage, at the campaign level, at the ad group level, at the keyword level. Just by looking at the conversion rate, you can see this one is extremely high conversion rate, right? 60% conversion rate, which means if I send uh, 100 people to this page, 60 of them will buy. Wow, that's great. So if I have that pattern to my advantage, why would I cap the budget? It's stupid. So uh, you can look at all these things and say for Prime Day, all my best campaigns that have a conversion rate of greater than 20%, that historically over 90 days, let's say these campaigns have had over 20% conversion rate and their ACoS has been really low, then during those two prime day days, you can just bump up the budgets across these, uh, these campaigns to 2X or 3X. And of course you need to make sure that you have some deal on because camp prime day is all about deals, right? So uh, if you have a deal and all these conditions are met, then you can do this stuff really fast within TV Synergy. You don't even need to go to Seller Central. So, yeah, so that was one. Rita, just a quick question on that one. Do you yes. ever see a time where PPC Ninja would automate this? And if it's seeing that you've got a great performing ACOS and your budget's, you know, low, it would up the budget for you? We will, we are heading in that direction. So, so far we haven't done it because people have their own kind of criteria for what that budget should be. Many people are mm -hmm. extremely sensitive about their budgets and they won't like anybody to mess with them, but we are yeah. headed in that direction. And that's the next kind of logical optimization automation that we're headed for. So great, yeah, great question. I mean, this would save us so much time, right? We wouldn't have to even think about this stuff, yes. Well, I like how you guys think about it. Like Bernie said that you're building the option for people to opt into these. Like it, you could still allow, you know, that they can toggle and say, yes, opt me into automatic budget, you know, yeah. or yeah. keep that feature off. That's really cool. Yeah, 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 thanks, yeah. Great, uh, so, okay, cool. So we talked about uh, adjusting budgets. Now let's talk about adjusting uh, your, uh, you know, dynamic bidding strategies. So let's talk a little bit about what these dynamic bidding strategies are. There's three of them. There's dynamic down only, which is the default for most campaign types other than I believe auto. Uh, most campaign types, when you create them, Amazon automatically puts them at down only. Then you have dynamic up and down, which is basically the ability for Amazon to uh, increase typically to double, right? Uh, basically it'll two X your bid in real time if they see a likelihood of a conversion. And what is that based on? How do they know that something is likely to convert? It is based on who is certainly, it's the shopper, their past history, their behavior that determines whether uh, Amazon thinks this, uh, you know, this is likely to convert better or not. So for example, if uh, let's say John uh, is looking for, he types foundation in into Amazon, right? And John has, let's say, never purchased foundation in his life before, there's a high likelihood that Amazon will choose the option of decreasing the bid in real time because there has been no kind of statistically proven correlation between the purchase that he's trying to make and you know, his past history. So this is how an Amazon dynamically uh, changes your bid based on who is searching, right? Now th that's very different from this other placement modifier that I just explained a while ago, uh, because this is, uh, you know, it, it is uh, dependent on the behavior of the shopper, right? So is it good? Is it bad? Is it ugly? Uh, we have seen that the dynamic up and down is getting better and better. Amazon is getting really good at being able to predict um, 
you know, shopping behaviors and stuff like that based on the enormous amount of data that they already have. And so I'm relying on this in the scenario where the ACOS is extremely low, I'm saying go for dynamic up and down. Like if my current ACOS at a campaign is 3%, 4%, 5%, I have nothing to lose if I set this on. Even if my bid was to double in real time, I can still be within my target ACoS and I can still win a lot more conversions that otherwise I would not have had access to because the default then would have been down only, which means my bid would always be bid down in real time uh, based on whoever else is bidding in that market, right? So it's actually really useful to understand when you should set your dynamic bids to up and down, to down only, or to fixed. Fixed is actually a rare, uh, I don't use it that much. I only use it for launches. And the reason why I, I use fixed bids for launches is because um, during launches, uh, what happens is that uh, Amazon doesn't have enough, oops, uh, Amazon doesn't have enough data to, um, to, make an, uh, to make the right decision for us on our behalf, right? They might have a tendency to just lower our bids in real time. Whereas what we want Amazon to do, especially at launch, is to give us more impressions, to give us more movement, right? So if we use the down only for launches, there's a chance that we'll be bid, because we don't have history, we will be bid down lower and lower, and we won't get any momentum, which is so critical at launch time, right? So for that reason, during launch three weeks, we, we set our bids to fixed. Then after three weeks, we take an evaluation whether the, uh, these bids should be either switched to up and down or they should be switched to down only, depending on what the, what the ACOS was at that point. That's how we decide where to go. So here is how I would go about it. So uh, like I, I showed you earlier, let me just set this to orders greater than one. So at least one order, right? Meaning uh, orders greater than, greater than one, okay. So let me say I had at least one order, right? And I find five campaigns that have a really good ACoS, right? Now I can uh, change these bidding strategies from down to up, down, either individually, like I'm showing you, I can switch this to it here, or I could just select all of them or some of them like that and use the bulk operator here. And I can adjust my bidding strategy to up, down, submit. Right. So what I just did was I picked my best campaigns that had significant orders and I have made sure that I am taking advantage of Amazon's extra attention that will give me more uh, you know, opportunities to show up in front of potential uh, clients uh, or uh, sorry, uh, shoppers through this change in bidding strategy. Right. Does that make sense? I'm only doing it for good scenarios. So don't be afraid when the scenario is really, really good to take advantage of this nice opportunity that Amazon is providing us, right? All right, so now let, if that's okay, then I'll go to the third one, which is adjusting placement modifiers. Now for placement modifiers, we have an entire view right here, separate view, just to look and examine uh, placements, right? So what is this view? Basically what it does is by campaign, uh, by placement, it's telling you what the performance is. Now you can get this data through Seller Central if you drill down, there's a lot of steps. You need to go into the campaigns, then you need to go into the placements, then you need to look at each of the placements. It's a lot of steps. Whereas here, we've just opened that whole list out for you across every single campaign. We've given you this list pivoted on your placements. So my, what is my goal here? My goal here is to find the best placements, regardless of which campaign. I just want to find where are my best placements? Where am I getting the best results for whatever campaign it is? So here again, I've set my, uh, my ACoS to less than 10%. And I can set another additional filter of, uh, you know, orders, at least one order, right? So uh, that means two or above, at least two orders. So that, that's significant. Now I'm paying attention to the placement modifier column here. So as you can see, there's three types of, or four types of placements. Uh, ignore remarketing because this is only available to a few accounts. Not everybody has access to remarketing. Most of you will have access to top of search, to product pages, to rest of search. 
Unfortunately, rest of search Amazon doesn't allow us to change the, the modifier on, on those. So you can go, uh, let's try top of search first. Let's just find all the top of search uh, placements that are doing extremely well with lots and lots of orders. Wow, these are great opportunities. What we wanna do here is we want to change or increment the placement modifier so that you can uh, get in front of the line more often and you can kind of get, um, you know, you can grab those sales at top of search because that is technically the best place to win the most sales, right? So if you can afford it, you want to keep going up. Now, how do how does my team do it for uh, the age, the the customers that we manage uh, through our agency? We actually go up by twenty five percent each week. So this is part of our weekly SOP to go into this uh, campaign placements view and see uh, within the past uh, you know month if uh, the performance is really really good. We want to keep incrementing. So as you can see here. This one has already gone up to 750% A cost, sorry, 750% placement modifier, right? You can go up to 900%, by the way. So I'm already at 750 and my A cost is beautiful. I'm getting great orders. I wanna keep going. I wanna basically lock in that top of search just for me for this campaign because I have everything going in my favor. I would not hold back. So I think this is the place where most people uh, miss out on the opportunity. Only like some of the very advanced advertisers actually know about this stuff and actually do something about it. But even if they know it, they don't have a way of doing it efficiently, but our software helps to do it efficiently because we can do it at scale. So I see this opportunity. I'm going to start this counter off at 25% today. Next week, I'll come back and I will see if it's still doing good. I'll go up 50. I'll go up to 75 every week. I increase by 25%. So that's how you could uh, kind of modify these. And of course, any changes you make within PPC Ninja, within a, a minute, they get reflected on Amazon, right? So that's really a good uh, way of kind of optimizing uh, on the fly and on the go. Any questions about placements before we yeah. move on? Yeah. Quick question, Ritu. Um, can you talk about the inverse of so if um, top of search is performing poorly? Do you also have the SOP of decreasing by 25% or do you go more aggressive or speak yeah. to that? Yes, I mean, that agreed. So that would be definitely, uh, you know, an evaluation of how high the ACOS has gone. If your ACOS has really, really gone high, 100% or above, I would remove the, the multiplier completely and set it to 1%. Yeah, I, I wouldn't bother with that. And I would just let the bids take care of themselves at that point. I generally like to use the placement, uh, you know, adjustments for grabbing more opportunities rather than a, a means for optimizing bids because optimizing bids I can do from within the bid optimizer anyway, right? So yeah, for the reverse scenario, uh, I would just set it to one and let it be at that 1%. Yeah, I mean, you can set it to 0% also, but uh, I, I generally like to keep it at, at one if possible. Uh, so that I'm still in the game for something. If there's an opportunity, let's say someone else uh, drops out of the game and they're not bidding, whatever, I might still get a chance. So that's how I do it. And when Can I ask for Janelle, yes, Janelle. Yeah, when I see the pencil there, does that mean that nobody's put any type of modifier in there? And I need to, okay. And yeah. then what if there's 1%, a lot of mine are showing 1% and then all the other ones have a pencil. Yeah. What, does that mean they've put in and they're just barely starting to, because it's the software doing that, obviously? Yeah, so this, wherever there has been no uh, uh, setting at all, it would show a pencil, which means it's editable and the value is null at this point. It's just a null indication. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go in and on anything that's below my target ACOS that I'm comfortable with this multiplier, that's a, a must-do step for me. I think so, yeah. You can actually go in here and bulk set that modifier to 25% right away. Everything, then, oh cool. Yeah, and then, then as you go forward, you can just take a, a decision and increase it based on whichever campaign has performed well. Uh, so that's that's how you would do it. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. Here we too. Si Simon here, one more question, mm -hmm. quick question. How often do you do this? Once a week, twi uh, once every two weeks, once every yeah. three weeks? Uh, we do it once a week. Uh, at our agency, we do it once a week because we generally feel that's enough data to kind of make a decision. Yeah. 
Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah. And I will be showing some SOPs at the end uh, that we use. Uh, so uh, bear with me. I will, I will get to it. Yeah.